We're doing it. We're going to do a tie-in to a tie-in to a death metal event from DC Comics. Hey everyone, this is Neo Reality Entertainment. And, and this is basically a tie-in video to the death metal tie-in to the death metal event of DC Comics. And <laughs> okay, this was crazy. Um we're going to have a little bit of a smaller recap. So basically the Justice League failed, Perpetua took over the Earth multiverse, is currently destroying it, and is now battling the dark the Batman who laughs, who has become the Darkest Knight after being killed by Wonder Woman because he had a plan to basically get Dr. Manhattan's body, except it's Batman's body. It's a apparently Batman imagined him becoming Dr. Manhattan and reducing himself into a Dr. Manhattan caricature of himself, both because the DC cannot leave well enough alone. And there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tie-ins, essentially, because I am completely confused. <laughs> Luckily, there's an online timeline for that. But, uh, and I, I published three videos, recorded all within two hours, or so, uh, points for dedication in one sitting. Uh, so, in, DC, in DC's death metal event, issue four, I believe, it was Wonder Woman had somehow been the one to convince Superboy Prime to stop being a mass murdering psychopathic nutcase regarding a scene where he says it would be a shot in the dark and then reminds Superboy Prime that isn't that what Superman is, a shot in the dark. He then punches the tower, allegedly, and they all find themselves here. So this is where I get my opinion on this. So in my humble opinion... Superboy Prime should die in this event. Now, I, I'm not I, like like we already know who Superboy Prime is as a character for those who've read comics, but for those who don't, I will get a quick rundown. So Superboy Prime was basically another version of Superman during the pre-crisis days. He man he he was teleported to his to another universe, Earth Prime, a uh, Prime Earth or something. And this is where he got to live as a normal kid. Then he realized he's Superman. He had a girlfriend named Lori who tragically died in the crisis. And it has basically become the last her like besides uh, the psycho pirate, he is the last one to have memories of what the life used to be like. Like he remembers the pr the pre crisis. He remembers post crisis. Zero hour. He remembers seeing all of it because he had spent time in this ver in this heaven area, where it turns out that oh he can watch all the events play on and unfold. And he grew desperate. He was starting to miss home. He missed his family. He missed his loved ones. And he missed Lori. He wanted to get them all back. And leading to this event where it, he literally punches reality, the causing massive retcons in ways that you could never imagine. And this would lead into the event where he and Alexander Luthor, at the, at the behest and manipulation of Alexander Luthor, or that he would try to make the perfect Earth, where he could have everything he wanted, at the came at the cost of the entire Earth, of the entire Earth, which led to the restoration of the multiverse in the event called Infinite Crisis. He would then become a villain for a couple more times. Times during Jeff Johnson's Green Lantern run, he would kill a bunch of titans because that was a popular thing to do at the time and he would show up he would f battle them for the final time in the teen titans 100th and 100th issue of the jeff johns era titans when it went to another rider where it would lead to him being trapped in the source wall all and it's revealed in death metal 4 that he's been watching everything again in the source wall and when it was destroyed he sought out the batman who laughs who gave him the offer to get back his earth Earth or create a better reality, which led to Trinity Crisis, where it's revealed that he, Darkseid, and the Anti-Monitor are basically in the Crisis Earths that they had won in. And Wonder Woman convinces him that this is not a real Earth, that we can rebuild it, we can fix it, an infinite multiverse again, leading to his sudden face turn. And now, and no mention of, hey, uh, didn't you do all these horrible things? Things like, I know time was, was of the essence, but there was no surprise from Batman or Superman to see, oh, that's, 
Oh, you're prime. Didn't we fight before? Yeah. So, in my opinion, I felt like, yeah, I get the feeling this is going to a route where he's going to die in this event. And honestly, I would honestly think it'd be the best option for him because all the horrible stuff he did, wouldn't it be best to have a redemption arc? Like, I get the feeling this is part of his redemption arc, hopefully, because in DC, in, in I don't know why I keep filming will say deceased. I, I was reading that. Uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal, The Secret Origin Number 1, which is written by Scott Snyder and Jeff Johns, the guy who turned Superboy Prime into the mass murdering psychopath, and pretty much is the most noticeable one that writes him nowadays, is he brought him back in Shazam's in his Shazam run, and and in the headline in the solicitation of this event, which is set to launch on Dece on December, the DCU's darkest secrets are sworn while two titans class. The heroes search for a way to defeat the darkest knight with the universe's past, while Superboy Prime faces down the demonic Batman, or as it later was changed, I believe in the solicitations. Um, just get all the. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I remember this was from a while back, but let's see if there was ever an update made regarding. Let's see, League of Comic Geeks. Let's see if that site's working. Okay, site's not work. Oh wait, okay, uh, oh, it's working. Yeah, so it's still the same. It's set to launch around December first. Originally it was set for December twenty second, and but it seems like it ran up, but um. And also comes with a beautiful variant piece of Gary Frank. So I will be getting the variant cover just for because it's Gary Frank and Brad Anderson working together one more time. I mean, second verse, same as the first. But yeah, Sewer Prime is going to battle the Darkest Knight in this event. And I was all for this because, hell, it'd be an, because I get the feeling Scott Snyder, and I keep thinking this is my gut feeling. I think Scott Snyder felt bad for fans who wanted Superman to fight Dr. Manhattan, even though Dr. Manhattan would kick his ass. But, uh, so they were like, okay, let, let, let's compromise. We got the villainous Superboy Prime and a crazed demonic version of, of, the, of Dr. Manhattan going one-on-one. -on -one. And I was like, okay... You, you, like, if that's the route they were thinking of, I'll, I'll be all against it, but I'm all for this fight because it's the most powerful god in the universe versus essentially the Superman with no weaknesses. Like, in Infinite Crisis, they had to build up reasons how to beat him because... Um, because he's from another multi, he's from the original multiverse. He's from the pre-crisis Earth. He's from the Silver Age, where he could move planets, blow things up with the flick of his wrists, and all that nonsense. And, and they had to find ways to get around those issues. Jeff Johns had to find a way to make a weakness, which led to a retcon where even though he can't be affected by Earth's kryptonite in this universe, he somehow gets affected by the Red Sun. I don't know. Which uh, leads to his defeat. But now, now imagine all those shackles are now removed. He has his solar suit and he has the power of the sun, hopefully, if it's been reconstituted. And he has to, and he's going to say, I'm going to go battle the, the, the darkest night. And it's going to be a no hold bar beatdown because this issue is said to be 80 page. This is going to be what? Uh, let's see. Let me double check just to, just to check on this. Uh, curses. This is down for schedule maintenance. Okay. I'll have to look at something else. Uh, if I'm correct, I think they said this is going to be an 80-page event. I I think. I could be wrong. Uh, 80 pages, 80 pages, 80 pages. I think it's 80 pages. I, I could be wrong. But, um... Let's see. Okay, I'm on gamesradar.com. Um, uh, as part of the solicitations that got revealed... Okay, I think it's it's a prestige format event, and I keep hearing it's either eighty pages or forty eight page or forty two pages. It is honestly, I'm hoping it's the forty eight page route. I mean, it's the eighty page route, which leads to some secret history because this also is involving being in the solicitation information here that it says a tale by Scott Snyder and Jeff Johns reveals the key to the destruction of the Darkest Night. 
Superboy Prime's going to battle him while the heroes find a way. So he's essentially distracting the Darkest Night and trying to kill him, him if he can. So I feel like, yeah, th this is where Superboy Prime's story should come to an end. Because, it, 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 let's be honest, even if he somehow survives, what can you really do with him after? Like, he's never going to really be redeemed for being a mass murdering, psychopathic, everything was better on my earth crusade. And all the horrible things that the DC Universe begins to remember the past DCU pre-Flashpoint entirely after this. They'll remember what he did. And while Superman Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman would try to back in and say, look, he deserves a chance. We need to give him trust. He's never really going to get that life back. He'll always be under suspicion. And Batman's probably plotting something against him all the time. So, yeah, I, I feel like... <laughs> I feel like it would be probably best if he got killed off in this event and when Wonder Woman or or when the multiverse is restored, it reveals an Earth Prime made where it's reborn, where a Superman does exist, where a Superboy Prime is re-resurrected, so to speak, with no memories of what he had done, all the horrible things he'd done, and, but it's more like a, a second chance at life kind of thing he gets his happy ending and he doesn't have and he doesn't live with the horrendous murderous spree he's committed i feel like like he like let's see he like he should like he died like he fought like he what he was he was born man there should be a poetic way to describe this uh like like sort of like darth vader like he was born a jedi grew as a sith Redeem dies as a hero, so to speak, kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I feel like that should be his route, where he sacrifices himself, battling the Darkest Knight to give the heroes a, sh a shot to defeat him. Now, I do know that in Death Metal 6, I believe, I believe let's, let me just double check on that, that in Death Metal 6's cover, it does show him with the other heroes with Wonder Woman leading the charge in Death Metal 6. I hope that's more of a, oh, he could be in this event. Well, maybe we're going to subvert the expectation and actually kill him off in, in the Secret Origin number one. I feel like that would be better suited to where his story comes to an end. Like, he battles the Darkest Knight, sacrifices his life, defeating him, and then he gets a second chance at life, but doesn't have to relive the horrible things he's done. Like, a new Superboy Prime exists. This that lives the life that the original Superboy Prime could have lived had things went very differently in his life. But, yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, this event should be his final, final big appearance in here. The villainous Superboy Prime dying as a hero against battling the Darkest Knight in an epic no holds bar Dark Knight's Death Metal the Secret Origin where he dies battling the Darkest Knight on no holds bar all out superhero supervillain brawl all where Superboy Prime finally fulfills what he always wanted to be when he was a kid before he got twisted and warped and had to live through the crisis before he was ready he mentally leading to his sacrifice and all that Feels like that would be the perfect ending for Superboy Prime. I feel like that would be the best ending. He goes out be he goes out from being seen as a villain and a monster, dying as a hero in the arms of those he once condemned as his enemies, realizing the error of his ways. So yeah, I feel like that should be the best option they could take with this in the Secret Origin number one event. This could be entirely wrong and pointless, but I made this video to give my thoughts on that. So those are my thoughts on Dark Knight's Death Metal, the secret origin idea of Superboy Prime vs. The Darkest Knight. This was Neo Reality and Tim. If you like, comment, subscribe, and donate. Stay tuned for more, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.